What we're going to do now is derive the equation for the magnetic field inside a current carrying solenoid. We're looking at a cross section of a coil. And here's a picture of what I'm trying to express here. It is a current that is going in and it's kind of curling around like this way. A current goes in that end, comes out this end. And what we're doing is we're looking at a cross section. So in this cross section, we've kind of sliced through the middle of this solenoid so we can see that the current right here, this is I that we're drawing right here, it goes into the page right here, goes around the back of the coil, and comes out the other side. Current goes into the page here, goes out of the page here. And these are all just different current loops of the coil that we're looking at right here and you can use your right hand rule. The magnetic field will curl around in this direction, like that, like that, like that, like that, curling around in this direction, like that, like that, like that, and you can keep doing that. The magnetic field due to each of these loops is in the opposite direction. Again, you can use your right hand rule to determine that. And there's a couple things I want you to notice here. In between the coils, right here, the magnetic field here is due to that coil is pointed to the left. The magnetic field due to this one is pointed to the right. That is equidistant from both coils. What is the magnetic field at this point right in between there? Zero. zero by superposition. It's zero between there. Where they don't cancel is inside this thing. Inside of this coil, uh, the magnetic field is always pointing up. And notice, both of these sides contribute to it pointing up. So yes, you can use the wire right hand rule to determine the magnetic field direction inside that coil. Far away outside this thing, B equals zero. You can justify this by the following. All these currents are going in, all these currents are going out. If I look at this whole region, this whole region right there, which direction is the net current going? If on one half it's going, all the current's going in, the other half it's all going out, is there any current at all? So far from this, far from the, far from the solenoid, uh, the magnetic field out here, B equals zero. And we actually assume, for all long solenoids, assume that we're far enough from it that the field is actually zero outside. But what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the field inside the solenoid using Ampere's law. So what we have here is a cross section of the coil here and all we're seeing is the current going into this side and the current coming out of this side. Uh, and as we've already shown the magnetic field is pointed up this way. You can figure that out using the wire right hand rule or the coil right hand rule. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a uh, closed loop and integrate over that. So I'm going to create a what we call an Amperian loop which I'm going to do in red here. Let's say that there are N, capital N, turns within the Amperian loop. So on my drawing here there's one, two, three, four, five turns puncturing the Amperian loop, but let's just say there's N turns in general. So I'm going to call this uh, length L right here. This is length L on this side. Uh, so is this. This is length L. Uh, Ampere's law is just that the integral about a closed loop of B dotted on DS is equal to mu naught times the current puncturing any surface bounded by that loop. Let's go ahead and integrate uh, b dot ds right here to see what we get. So first of all, we know that b is uh, parallel right here. Right here, b is parallel to ds. So our dot product just becomes cosine of 0 is 1. Here, uh, during in this little section, notice that our little arc, or ds, or integral of ds, or path length, is completely perpendicular to B. So we'll get nothing right there, even though it's inside of the coil, the B dot DS, because they're perpendicular to each other, B and DS, nothing. And out here, uh, the magnetic field is zero between those, as we showed before, so there's nothing there. And outside the solenoid, the magnetic field is zero as well. So the only part of this integral that actually contributes is this section right in here. 
inside the coil. So I can just rewrite this as such. Uh, B is going to be a constant by symmetry. So I'm just going to pull B out. And the dot product in here, since they're both in the same direction, the DS and the B are in the same direction, uh, I get cosine of 0 as 1. So all I have left is the integral of DS equals mu naught times. Now when we figure out the current going through here, although I is the current that is in this wire, notice that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we'll just call it n number of turns. So the current actually puncturing this loop right here, puncturing it, is actually n times i. Because we got to count the current every single time it punctures this loop. So that gives us that. And now the integral, the only part of this integral that is counted is along this left side right here. This is the only side that counts because it's uh, B is perpendicular to DS there. The field is zero, magnetic field zero there, and it's outside the solenoid at zero. And again, uh, either perpendicular or zero right everywhere here. So all I get for this whole thing is just B times L, our length L, is mu naught times N, the number of turns trapped within that loop, times I. So when we solve for B, what we get is B due to a solenoid or coil is mu naught capital N times I over the length of our Amperian loop. Now, what we do is typically, for this situation, uh, we define little n is the number of turns per unit length of the coil. Uh, in our situation right here, uh, it's just going to be this n over l is the number of loops per meter. I can just rewrite this as this. mu naught times little n times i. So what we end up with is just in time for Easter, bunny. B equals mu naught n i. Or if you want to do it like this. It is a bunny, an Easter bunny, a solenoid magnetic field bunny.